Hi, I'm Craig Everett, Aggregate and Nashville Support Technologist at Tarmac, and today Mahmood and I are going to talk about alternative asphalt surface course mixtures to hot rolled asphalt. HRA, specifically chipped HRA surface course using sand fines, is something unique to the UK and Southern Ireland. It came from a period in highways that were less heavily trafficked and congested, and all varieties have served as well and no doubt will continue to feature in road construction and maintenance. But we have progressively moved away from hot rolled and the reasons for this shift are unlikely to reduce, more likely increase. This short video will try to summarise the differences between hot rolled and SMA based surface courses, including their performance and what that means for surface course selection. So I'll be covering mixture composition, mix properties, how each mixture performs under different test conditions, the practicalities of installation, and then a brief case study. So composition, uh, hot rolled asphalt is a gap graded mixture of aggregate, sand, filler, and bitumen. A high proportion of the fine aggregate and filler creates a mortar when mixed with the bitumen, which provides a flexible, durable, water resistant asphalt that will resist cracking to a degree, depending on underlying conditions. The strength of this mixture comes from the fine aggregate bitumen mortar and the dense slow void properties contribute to its durability. Even when this material starts to fail, it can remain serviceable for a long time before full remediation is required. However, the high fines, high binder content nature of the mix can be prone to rutting under heavy traffic. SMA. Uh, Stonemastic asphalt contains a high proportion of coarse aggregate that interlocks to form a stone skeleton providing excellent resistance to permanent deformation under heavy traffic loading. The stone skeleton is filled with a high bitumen content, which gives an ex excellent bind of film thickness, which HRA doesn't have due to its high find content. SMA can be used as a surface course or a binder course due to its resistance to wear, which makes it ideal for use on urban roads and highways with high traffic loads. The high resistance to rutting can be further enhanced by using a high quality polymer modified binder, which also provides excellent resistance to cracking, uh, which can be a major issue with a lot of local roads. So to recap, the hot rolled asphalt gets its strength from the mortar element of the fines and the bitumen, whereas the stonemastic asphalt relies on the interlocking of the coarse aggregate. This slide shows the typical proportions of aggregate and binder that make up the different mix types. The description of the hot rolled asphalt mixes indicate the nominal stone content, which is the first number, i.e. 35%, followed by the aggregate size, i.e. 14 millimeter. So 35-14 is 35% 14 millimeter stone content. The lower stone content hot rolled requires an additional stage of rolling pre-coated chippings into the freshly laid surface to apply surface texture. Whereas the higher stone content hot rolled and the SMA mixes do not, which, which reduces the time it takes to complete installation. It's a one stage installation. Uh, this is covered later in, in more detail. In terms of rotting or permanent deformation, a mixture ability to resist deformation under heavy traffic is important and is measured using a laboratory wheel tracking machine or test, where the sample of the mixture which can be called from laid material or lab prepared slabs are subject to a number of cycles under a loaded solid rubber tear, which passes over the specimen for a given number of cycles. The rod that has formed is measured and recorded. From the table, um, you will see that there are two procedures for this test. While the HRA is being subjected to 1000 cycles, the, MS, the SMA material um, has been subjected to much longer number of cycles up to 2000 cycles. However, although there is, it's more aggressive uh, with SMA, 
and the SMA material has achieved very much lower rot in which is about two um, millimeter in comparison to about 12 millimeter or nine millimeter with HRA with the less aggressive procedure. The second well-known uh, deterioration mechanism in the asphalt industry is the cracking. A mixture ability to resist cracking is important, as not all local roads are built on structurally found foundation, meaning movements below, below can transfer strain and stresses to the surfaces. One way of measuring this uh, is using the four-point bending fatigue test uh, used in the lab prepared specimen. Here, the specimen is restrained at four points by means of four clamps. The two outer clamps remain static, while the two inner clamps deflect according to the stress or the strain applied. This test simulates pavement fatigue failure and the traffic loading as the repetitive loading caused tension at the bottom of the specimen, leading to initial cracking that will then propagate through the specimen until failure. This usually occurs in the area of constant maximum value bending between the two inner clamps. The fatigue failure occurs at the moment the stiffness of the specimen has decreased to half of its initial value. Looking at the sum results, uh, this table shows the strain required for the material to fail or for to, uh, to fail. <clears throat> so the higher the number of uh, the better actually in terms of the strain. So the use of a high quality polymer modified bitumen um, and the greater binder film thickness give far superior performance compared to HRA mix. This is critical when considering the underlying structure of the road to be resurfaced. Many roads have evolved over the years and do not have the same foundation as a fully constructed road like a motorway and are therefore subjected to movement from below as well as stresses and strain from the increasing traffic. How about the performance in terms of sight and especially uh, in terms of health and safety corner to a degree which are noise and riding quality. The demands from the road users, the transport sector and the society have consistently and um, have, have constituted an ever increasing incentive to provide more sustainable pavement solutions, including lower noise surfaces. Pretty obvious, an attire rolls over the road surface and it makes contact. This is like slapping the surface and this generates noise. If you're interested to know more about the mechanism of noise and the generation and the element involved, there is a separate dedicated session for noise and I encourage you to attend. Here, we are going to focus on the effect of the surface texture on noise. So having a positive profile such as in chipped hot rolled asphalt as can be seen, will give rise to higher noise levels from tire vibration than the pavement texture having a negative profile. Also, a good compaction and cubic aggregate shape generate a pavement surface with negative texture. So what does it mean actually here? The basic concept of using open texture thin layer pavements for noise reduction is to create pavement structure with as big cavities as at the surface of the pavement as possible in order to reduce the noise generated by air pumping. And at the same time, ensuring smooth surface so the noise generated by the tire vibration will not be increased. So how do we measure the noise? The standard UK method for measuring vehicle noise on site is using the statistical pass by or known as the SPB method. This involved placing a, micro, uh, a microphone at the side of the road and taking noise measurement at each vehicle and uh, passes along with the vehicle speed. And the standard uh, unit in measuring noise is the decibel system. And it has a logarithmic scale with the intensity of noise. Roughly, um, every three decibels um, increase uh, equals uh, doubling the noise intensity. In general, a uh, road vehicle noise in, is in the range between 70 to 90 decibels. Typically for an edge chipped 
HRA is just below 88 decibels at 90 km per hour, while most SMA surfaces are in the range of 80 dB decibels, which is a big difference between them. If you are more interested about noise and uh, measurement in terms of uh, relatively to HRA, uh, table 917 in the MCHW series 900 gives an assessment to the noise level ranging from level 3 as a very quiet surface to 2 as a quieter than HRA to level 1, which is equivalent to HRA surfacing. The number on that table are actually relative to chipped HRA, and most recent new surfaces um, are quieter than chipped HRA. So the road surface influence number or the RSI will be negative in this table. Moving on, um, HRA is very well known for its premium sealing ability, which is fantastic to protect the binder and the base lower layers uh, from water ingress as a surface, as a surface course. And it's also used as a binder course in bridge deck for the same um, um, purpose, which is sealing the, uh, the, the bridge deck. On the other hand, this uh, premium ability degrades the riding quality as water spray forms on the surface, which affect the visibility and the comfort of the driving experience. These two photos um, show um, two sections of the same road, and uh, they are very good examples of how water spray from different surface layer. So practical uh, practical limitations. Um, the two biggest limitations with chipped hot rolled in particular are weather conditions and the working width that you have to have to work with. But there are other factors that that should be considered. The reality of getting proper pre-coated chipping embedment and retention is that laying is normally restricted to between April and October, so it's it, it can be seasonal. That's not to say it's impossible to lay chipped hot rolled in challenging conditions. In fact, there was a there was a section of the M6 north of Wolverhampton where where I live that was laid with polymer modified binder through a harsh winter, um, and that lasted 20 years. But that's probably the exception to the rule. Chipped hot roll is sensitive to, to rapid cooling and should be really treated as seasonal. SMA uh, obviously needs proper compaction, but the reality is that these are laid all year long, uh, in, including through, throughout cold, cold winter nights. Uh, so chipping, chipping of hot roll. Hot rolled asphalt surfacing gangs are larger by by up to five people, so they require more more workers. You need additional workers to operate the chipping process, which includes a shovel, uh, varying the pre-coated chippings between a stockpile and the chipping machine. It's uh, but it's the width of the chipping process that has the biggest practical impact. You need enough space to safely bring the chippings into the machine. Uh, the shovel does this. Uh, the shovel doing this obviously can't run on a laid material, so it needs to come in from the side. So you're occupying uh, the the adjacent lane. So it's probably going to result in a complete carriageway or, or road closure, which obviously means resulting uh, results with increased disruption. SMA based products don't have this issue. Uh, it's a single laying operation, so it's a lot quicker. And the advantage there, obviously, is that they can be open to tra traffic relatively quickly after laying. And, uh, something not related to practicalities, but still an issue, is the fact that it's currently very difficult to see hot rolled asphalt that's chipped being supplied at significantly reduced temperatures. Uh, firstly, there's the issue of, of drying wet sand. That's uh, that's used in the, the manufacture process. If you don't, uh, you can end up with sloppy asphalt, which uh, can be one of the causes of level control problems on site, and the classic washboard effect undulation. Uh, next, it's going to be harder to get good chipping embedment and retention, so it, the, the chippings are not going to stick as well into the mat uh, if the mat's colder. This is probably an area that needs more work, but 
it's hard to see major temperature and therefore carbon footprint reduction with chipped hot rolled whilst we're already pushing clients to accept warm SMAs and thin surfing surfacing as the new normal. Hot rolled isn't a material that easily lends itself to significant recycled content or, or wrap. Um, and this is at a time when the industry is pushing to, to increase wrap, wrap levels to 20% in SMA based surface courses. Uh, and sometimes much higher than that. Laying chipped hot rolled in particular slows down the paving process, so, so shift outputs may be lower. Uh, in addition, there's obviously much more material involved in laying hot rolled at sort of 40 to 50 mil thick uh, compared to a 10 mil SMA, which would be done at around about 30 mil thickness. So having dealt mostly with chipped hot roll, this case study compares unchipped 55% hot rolled asphalt with an SMA alternative. 55% uh, doesn't carry the same installation issues. In fact, being a rural road, it was probably something that could have been subject to a full closure if needed uh, without huge disruption to the public. Uh, and being rural, it didn't need super defamation resistance. But it did need enhanced crack resistance because the site was underlain with clay uh, which had shrinkage issues and the road base had been cement stabilized in the past and the effect of this was that the the road had broken up into blocks and the surface was a sticking plaster you can clearly see the effect of the underlying conditions on the road surface here uh, the client's standard 55% hot rolled was laid at the same time as a section of PMB bitumen SMA. Uh, the SMA didn't remain perfect, but the 55% hot rolled started cracking very soon after laying with the, uh, the SMA PMB coping with that situation much better. So a good solution there. So thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you.